What's up guys? So today we're back with another episode. I did go ahead and get a microphone and I finally, I believe I finally figured out how to operate it. So I'm very excited. Um, I did a little test video. Hopefully this one doesn't end up terrible, but I did a test video and uh, kind of a mess here, but I just figured out how to use it. So um, I wanted to test and just see if uh, in this week's video, first off, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to thank everybody who's been liking and subscribing. We've had tons of interactions. Um, I'm learning some stuff from some people in the comments too with, with the stuff they're commenting. Try to keep the stuff, again, the negativity to a minimum. We've had a lot of people comment, um, and I'd say probably 80% of it has been useful material. If you have your own opinions and stuff like that, just unless it's an absolute statistic that is you know well-founded, don't, don't comment it. Um, a lot of the stuff that, you know, the net more negative comments just don't flat out make any sense. Um, so my extensive background is, um, I've just always been, you know, a hands-on person. I know a lot about paint, material finishes, uh, mechanicals, things like that. Like I, that's what I enjoy learning about. So that's why I figured I could, you know, try to give back to the community and also learn from some others who, cause I know there's a lot of individuals who know a lot about things and just don't share typically as much as you know what we need them to so um, this is mainly just for for newbies to test longevity Th these are just different things that you know um, could be physical issues or are really good and could encourage somebody to you know purchase and just know that like a year or two three years from now this will still be a reliable gun still be you know good in in the future and a lot of people have just been you know kind of voicing their opinions you know because none of it is is a, a fact of any sort um, for the negative stuff either way but there are a lot of people who have brought a lot of good um, material to the channel they have brought you know their current builds things they've done that is exactly what we're trying to do we're trying to make this an environment to where if you know you're com considering buying a gun somebody else can say oh no i've got this with this you know and it doesn't really you know pan out to what you think it will be for me a big learning lesson about the x macro was physically that it's not really that much indifference to this gun and i can shoot this gun a lot better why not just carry this one and i certainly can they're they're pretty close for concealability for me with my body type they're, they're very close um and i actually enjoy carrying this one even longer throughout the day it's a funny dynamic i don't know why it's that way maybe it's you know they both have the same holster from the same company um nevertheless i do carrying this i do enjoy carrying this guy so um on the heels of the x macro video i wanted to make this video because uh, I wanted just to see if I could get this FCU to rust out. So um, interesting dynamic to purposely ruin a gun. Nevertheless, I did try it. So for seven straight days, what I did is I would physically, you know, take a steam shower and I did kind of milk it and go a little bit longer uh, to try to get more uh, moisture throughout the whole gun itself. And I will post some pictures so you guys can physically see. Um, what is going on and then we'll do a visual inspection and then we will take it apart and see how the insides of it did now i will tell you i do think that there's not going to be anything wrong with this gun but i haven't this is the first so what i did is i would physically shower leave it in the shower let it steam up and then i would physically put it in the bedroom on the stand where um it literally would sit and i wouldn't dry it so i was doing that for seven consecutive days to try to see if i could encourage um corrosion to happen so um i just put the magazine in so you can see we got that guy over there so i actually didn't test it with the magazine just because i have ammo in there um so I, th that wasn't part of the the uh, conclusion i was trying to draw nevertheless we'll just safety check it so as you can see nothing in the chamber okay nothing in there okay um so this out from underneath my light okay so now um visually inspecting uh looks like the oil kind of bunched up there that might be because it's it's kind of pairing up with with the moisture that you know the moisture was actually getting into the oil there i had a, a little bit of oil i don't really remember oil in it that much maybe that is a little bit of moisture in, in on the guide rod itself um i see a little bit of color there but that could just be the actual um you know the propellant that comes out of the firearm 
mixed with, you know, just trying to clean itself. Obviously, water would, would try to wash that off. So, um, you know, but I don't, I, don't, I don't see any corrosion so far. Uh, got a little bit there on the inside. Yeah, that's definitely corrosion on the inside of the um, extractor here. So I'll physically go into more depth than I thought, and I will take that out as well. Um, but visually, other than that, nothing in terms of, I don't see anything building up here on the trigger. I don't see anything building up on the barrel. I don't see anything else. Um, that is a original SIG um competition slide kit that this is a part of so we're going to go further into depth than i thought on this so let's take it apart and we'll come right back and continue our investigation okay now step one out of step two of breaking this down further i do not see anything excessive on the inside um the guide rod looks more than fine. I don't see anything of concern here. Uh, the slide rails all look fine. To be fair, this is a Zev full upper barrel, and maybe their DLC coating might be better than SIG's traditional one, but really the real culprit is the fire control unit. So let's go a little bit further into detail. We're not supposed to be breaking these things down on YouTube, I guess, unless you're like a armor or gunsmith or whatever. So we'll be right back again. I guess this is two. This is not one out of two. This is two out of three here soon, I guess, because we're going to go further than this. So um, be right back. OK, guys, now we got the fire control um, unit out of the firearm. As you see, this is the actual gun, per se. And as you can see. Now, I know some people are going to ridicule me. You see there's a little bit of gun grease there. SIG says in the ma owner's manual to use a tiny bit of gun grease. So I do. I don't use gun grease on any other gun. Um, but SIG says that you're supposed to use it. I put a little tiny bit. Um, but again, that's just what the owner's manual said to do. Um, so try to hold back the harsh comments. I, I know some people will be, oh, gun grease, you're, you're a moron, whatever. That's fine. Say whatever you got to say. All in all, um, I do believe the manufacturer knows its overall intended use better than anybody, so I follow the guidelines there, and I saw that it needed some, so I put a little bit. I'm not a big gun grease guy. I do think that oil is all you need, but nevertheless, um, under full inspection, there is no corrosion on this fire control unit, so it's leading me to believe it's not any, it's probably the trigger shoe that the, um, the X macro has that causes it to rust. And then the result of that is that it physically, you know, is, is, is spreading through obviously, you know, uh, being connected to the other, other metal. Now it's a pretty far fetched idea, but that's just where I saw a majority of it on the X macro. So that's, what's going to be my theory. Um, I don't know ultimately what it is. And I'm physically going to send that gun off to, um, SIG to see what they will do about it. But I don't know what they will do and I will update you guys on how that goes. So, There we go, a little way around that. All in all, and I haven't cleaned this gun at all, so I, I, I really don't. So as you can see, I'm trying not to get too much on myself, but some wear patterns there, and we do have some bare exposed um, material, and uh, nothing really to be concerned about. This is all done really, really well. Um, and again, this is the Zev slide. Let's just check, I haven't even checked this. Let's see. RMR still strong. So this has been, you know, really, really, um, you know, undergoing a lot of physical, uh, it's like physically drops of water on the side. So I, I wouldn't even say it's just kind of, I mean, it is condensation, but in a way it's pretty excessive. I mean, it's, 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 you know, I've been running the shower for an hour and getting the, the bathroom real hot and steamy. So that way we can try to do this. And as you can see, let me see if I can physically get in there. I'm going to take it, you know, even further down, but uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good. You see it right there. Pretty good in there. So let's go a little bit further. All right, guys, last step, and uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, guys, we are back. Okay, <laughs> we are back now, and as you can see, I'm trying to get it so you guys can physically see because obviously my depth of perception is different from the cameras uh there is nothing in essentially on this 
The striker spring is doing pretty good. The striker assembly, I guess I should say. Um, there is some oil in there, which I try not to oil it, but obviously as you start shooting the gun, it's going to physically get into places where um, you weren't planning to. So, And I know people who physically do oil this. Some people are like, don't ever get oil in there, blah, blah, blah. I don't, whatever. I don't even care to comment on those people. But So this is right here. That is what that is. So, let's see. So, I knocked off the top, and there's a little bit of orange there. However, the rest of that's just dirt under there, I believe. Mm, it's caked on there pretty good. So, I will have to physically, let's see if we can just get this off real quick. A little bit of gun cleaner here. Let it soak there for a second. Now, this is the rest of the um, extractor. It's got a little bit right there. I know it's, I know it's hard to see. It, it's much easier to see with the naked eye. But um, there is just a tiny bit of corrosion there, guys. Again, it's not... Super terrible, but just something to consider if you have a gun that you, yeah, this is fully orange under the, yeah, you, can you see that? That's all rust. So, interesting. That is interesting. I, I didn't expect to get anything out of this. Nevertheless, we found some intriguing, and, and this is actually a OEM SIG um, assembly. Now, is this going to physically render the gun you know useless I, I wouldn't say that and if you're inspecting your your firearms as you should be um this should, wouldn't be an issue for you and in the sig's defense i kind of went overboard with doing this for seven days straight and um obviously not taking it down and cleaning it i mean the water's just going to be retained in there and that's going to start breaking down the material um, but as you can see it did leave a tiny little bit of a mark there, right where that was. And there's a wear pattern there, so it is, that's probably where the contact points are, are meeting. It is, it's it's the contact point where it's meeting and kind of mirroring off of this, right? So, all in all, this was exposed metal, and it wore past the finish, and I kind of abused it with the, the water issue. I'm sure that if you were to dunk your gun into water and then clean it afterwards, you'd be fine. Um, but all in all, another positive from it, not to, to harbor on the negative, but it did physically have some corrosion in there. There's a tiny bit that looks like it, it rubbed off on the slide there. Uh, that's quite a bit. But nevertheless... Um, this was something that I was specifically trying to see. You can see the coloring there. It's pretty extensive, but I was trying to physically do that. And more importantly, um, you know, this is just another prime example of why you want to, you know, get into, if you own a firearm, you should be inspecting it all the time. You should be, um, you know, fully understanding how it operates, the breakdown of it, and that's the importance of, of making sure, you know, a visual inspection sometimes just isn't enough. Sometimes you have to physically break it down and go through all the links. But um, things like that. People don't think about stuff like that. Get in the shower. You might take a long shower, leave the gun there, oop, pop it in the bedroom, dry it off or whatever. If there's, there's, there's water that's getting in, from you know there's constant places getting in that could be something to where you need to clean your firearm you know with a in-depth more uh, more in-depth cleaning more regularly so i was really surprised to have anything on it my overall opinion on it is i purposely made it i wouldn't call it a fail per se but it is something that if you are taking your gun with you to the shower it looks like that can and obviously you caught it very early on it's only been a week if this would have progressed, that could, I don't, I don't think it would have caused a malfunction at this point, but I think if you're regularly taking showers with your gun, this is something that you should not take lightly and keep an eye on um, because it did, I mean, there's actually a lot of orange coming out of there. So um, just something for you guys to keep an eye on. So I was expecting not to find anything and funny enough, we found something so and that's that's kind of to be in, uh, expected what water breaks down literally every material it comes into contact with so am i surprised 
that we got a little bit of corrosion out of it. No, that's not what I'm saying, but it definitely was a learning lesson because I didn't expect to get this much, much out of that, that channel there. And um, I'm gonna physically shove, I'm, I'm gonna actually spray it down and, and clean the whole thing just so that way we can get it all cleaned out of there. And that way we won't promote any future corrosion to come of this. But all in all, I thought it was gonna be a waste of a video. I'm happy actually that I did it now. And if I'm taking other guns to the shower, this is a lesson learned. Um, wrap a t-shirt or something around it so that way you're creating a barrier for um, water not to get through. So that was interesting. Hopefully, if this is something you do, you might want to take it more seriously. If, you, if you've been doing this for months now, you could have 10 times the amount of rust in there and maybe it could cause a malfunction when you need your gun the most. So hopefully this has been a good, good comparison for you guys. Next week, uh, I plan to compare the uh, Spectre Comp and the MMP competitor that I ported. So obviously this very distinct price difference there and I haven't shot the Spectre Comp in a while. So I'm wondering if the competitor shoots better than it. And that's gonna suck if it does, but it's good for you if you're, comp you're comparing, should I get a heavier gun because the recoil is gonna be less. We're gonna find out next week. So stay tuned. Thank you for everybody who has liked, subscribed, and been a huge supporter of the channel. I'll never forget, you know, how many people, I mean, last week, let alone, you know, cause we're, we're a newer channel, right? We don't even have 15 videos yet. And um, just last from last week to this, when this video will go up, we had over 50 subscribers and I can't explain how happy I am that People are liking, people are subscribing and just, you know, physically being involved and helping us all each other out. When this gets to be a much bigger platform, this can be a big, big thing for people to come and share, you know, and it'll help all of us not waste money and think about things that we wouldn't have thought about as opposed to just running out, seeing a gun, buying it. And then, you know, a year later, be like, why did I buy this gun? Why did I have this? And for some people, you know, it's a hobby and not everybody wants to waste thousands and thousands of dollars just to figure out what's right, what's wrong. So that's my whole goal with this is to help out the community for the gun community. And I hope you guys uh, like what I'm doing and, you know, be sure to like and subscribe. It's definitely motivating me and I can't wait for next week's video. And we're just going to keep trucking along. If you guys have a test that you guys want to see me do, um, let me know in the comments as long as it's not like completely ruining the gun. I probably will try it, but um, these are my guns that I pay for with my own dollars, so I don't plan to specifically torture them, but in the name of, you know, just the experimental side of it, I do most of this stuff because I'm genuinely intrigued and it's a learning lesson for me as well as it is you guys. So thanks so much. Um, be sure to uh, tune in for next week's video and have a great week.